So uh, Rolls-Royce SMR is a company that is designing and manufacturing a complete nuclear power station. So unlike other uh, technology vendors, we are looking to design and deliver the whole power station um, and not just the nuclear island. And, and also we are aiming to modularize the entire power station. So around 90% of the entire power station is intended to be uh, con uh, manufactured in a modular for, uh, construction and then assembled on site. And the reason we're looking to do that is because we are trying to remove the risks, mitigate the risks that are seen with large nuclear construction programs currently around the world. Um, so back in 2015, 2016, Rolls-Royce PLC decided that the time was right to look at using the capability that we have within our group for both nuclear design and manufacturing to um, develop a small modular reactor for the civil nuclear market. Rolls-Royce PLC has 60 years worth of experience in design and manufacturing operation of nuclear steam raising plants for propulsion systems uh, for military purposes. And now we wanted to look at using that capability uh, to develop an SMR for the nuclear, civil nuclear market. Um, can you give a description of the Rolls-Royce small mod reactor? Very simple um, explanation of what's behind you and your virtual background. <laughs> so this is underneath the shell of the Rolls-Royce SMR um, uh, that you can see. And you can already see from, from this picture that we have, you can see the modularization that happens um, where you can start to see the blocks that are building up. Yeah. Um, now, what we can see behind you is we have the nuclear island, um, but we've got the reactor in the center. We have a standard pressurized water reactor, which is, um, I think, 70, 60, 70% of all the reactors in the world that are currently in, in operation are pressurized water reactors. Um, we have a standard three loop close coupled pressurized water reactor um, that we're putting in the center of this. So we are not looking for a novel type of nuclear technology, primarily because there is very limited operating experience with novel nuclear. Um, and also there's very limited experience of regulation of novel nuclear technologies. So we have a technology that every regulator in the world will recognize and understand. We're also using standard fuel as well. So, so this is the uh, um, the reactor island, uh, uh, the nuclear island, uh, with all of the systems around it. You can see underneath here we have a specific feature, the a seismic bearing. So the a seismic bearing, which is bespoke to each of the sites, actually isolates the nuclear island and all the nuclear components from the ground conditions. So it means that anything that we manufacture in the factories can be standardized and actually shipped to pretty much any site that we're looking at around the world, um, which means we don't need to redesign the plant for specific site conditions, which is one of the real requirements if you're going to go for a manufactured approach. So this is the, the nuclear island. Then we have the turbine island, which is very conventional, a standard turbine island, except for the fact that the majority of the components will be in delivered in a modular form which means that we are modulizing the, the turbine item with, for ease of construction and, and ease of operation as well. Mm. Um, then we have the cooling. You can't actually see the cooling water systems. We have uh, indirect cooling water systems. We also have the option for direct cooling water systems, um, direct cooling systems rather, but we have a modular solution to cooling, which would be slightly separate from the majority of uh, the main site of the plant. And then, of course, you can see um, we have the shell over the top, which covers up the, the concrete, um, obviously the concrete barrier layers that are required in, in terms of safety protection um, from the outside world. Um, so I have another picture as well. You can see some more layout drawings again of the plant, which actually again show much of the modularization of the overall power station. The arguments often made that nuclear is apparently the most expensive form of energy. Um, so what would you have to say in regards to that? So, so I, I do understand the argument. If you look at um, a, a true equivalent, so as, as yeah. many governments do look at true equivalent, so if you look at the cost of renewables plus the cost of energy storage that would be required to provide the same level of dispatchable power that nuclear can provide, then nuclear is significantly cheaper. 
um, than other forms of renewable when you take into account uh, energy storage requirements. Um, nuclear, once it's in operation, is an incredibly low cost form of energy generation. The issue with nuclear is around how you how you build the power station. And of course, with a design like ours, where we are deliberately removing complexity, removing risk to make sure that the power station can be manufactured and delivered in a reasonable time frame and reliably, which means that private investment can come and fund the plant. Again, that contributes to the lower cost overall of a solution like the Rolls-Royce SMR. What steps have been made through the design of the reactor that Rolls-Royce SMR is developing to make sure it's environmentally friendly? So nuclear power is is very environmentally friendly. We produce, uh, we are one of the lowest, uh, produce the lowest um, amount of carbon uh, for the amount of energy that is produced of pretty much every type of um, energy generation. Uh, if you look at the, um, if you look at the full life cycle of any uh, energy generating system. So if you think about the construction process and you think about the waste management, once the uh, energy source, the wind turbine, the photovoltaics, the power station is, is removed, we're one of the lowest, uh, generate the lowest amount of uh, carbon uh, into the atmosphere. And we're a very safe solution, a very incredibly energy dense. So we have very limited impact on the environment around us. Um, we take up a very limited amount of space. And if you looked at the amount of waste that's produced uh, per person, for example, in your whole lifetime, if you use nuclear power, the amount of waste you would produce would probably fit in a, a, a Coke can. So it is an incredibly environmentally solution um, to the requirement for low carbon power. Um, in terms of the waste, every generation of nuclear plant, quite rightly, has to abide by stricter uh, environmental regulations, and it's it's correct that we should do that. Um, the Rolls-Royce SMR is being specifically designed to reduce all forms of waste, so not just to reduce the spent fuel, the volume of spent fuel that we would use, but actually other forms of waste. Um, that are created on the plant during the construction process. For example, we're designing out the requirement for concrete. Um, so obviously we will still use a certain amount of concrete in the plant, um, but actually we're moving to, to use recycled steel in our, in our design rather than to use vast quantities of concrete. Um, and again, that lowers our overall um, environmental footprint. We also have a boron free design uh, in normal operation, which means we are reducing other hazardous forms of waste that would naturally or usually be produced uh, by a civil nuclear power station. So, so every aspect of the design is being looked at to reduce the amount of waste um, that is produced through life and our envi overall environmental impact. Um, during operation, our carbon footprint is incredibly low. Obviously, the power that's produced is carbon free. Um, there will still be a certain amount of carbon, uh, of carbon produced by the plant overall. We still have humans on the plant, but definitely a nuclear power plant during operation is very, very low carbon. In terms of now safety, so is your reactor design, is it safe? And then the second part of that is, would it be safe to live around one of the reactors? Yes, so nuclear, any nuclear power station that is approved by a regulator, a nuclear regulator in any country that operates nuclear power is safe. Um, so if you look at statistics produced by independent bodies, nuclear power is one of the safest forms of, of power generation in the world. In comparison to the amount of, uh, of harm caused by other power generating forms, it is an incredibly safe form of, of power. And um, in terms of your other questions around, uh, would, would you live near a nuclear power station or could you? So again, Using the UK, United Kingdom, where I live as an example, um, we're quite a small island, the United Kingdom. And so we have and we have several operating nuclear plants and populations live relatively close to those plant plants and have done for the last 50, 60 years. Certainly speaking personally, I would much rather live near a nuclear power station than I would live near a coal or gas fired power station. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I know that the uh, pollution, the potential pollution that would come from a nuclear power station would be much less harmful to me um, than the pollution I could expect coming from a coal-fired power station. In a country like Australia, 
um, where we're not like limited in the amount of land we have for renewables like in the UK, what's the advantage of having and investing in nuclear energy? You have the advantage that you have significant amounts of land. I absolutely right. Um, the issue that, that remains with renewable power is the intermittency. So, so at the moment, obviously, you can have lots of photovoltaics, you can have lots of, um, of wind capacity, which is great. But actually, when it's night or when the wind's not blowing, the question becomes, how are you going to power your industry or how are you going to give light to your population or, or keep the infrastructure going? And unfortunately, battery storage solutions have not yet reached the, the capability to be able to provide with certainty the level of uh, energy that we would be required as a backup. So, so many applications and many industries need always on power. They need a solution that is there and reliable at 24 seven. Um, and unfortunately, currently renewable power doesn't provide that type of solution. So there needs to be a backup. Now, currently in most countries in the world, the backup or the baseline solution is provided by coal or gas mm. and quite rightly, we want to move away from using those types of fuels. What stage are you up to um, in the development of the reactor? So it's a really good time for you to ask me that mm. question. Um, so we we are obviously we're going through the design development stage. Interestingly for us, the design process doesn't end on paper. Our design process, because we're a manufacturer, ends with commissioning of the plant. Um, so we are um, at an advanced stage of design for the, uh, many of the systems of the plant. We're at a lower stage of design for some elements of the power station, which is, is perfectly normal for an overall um, design program of this nature. Um, we're also currently going through the UK's um, regulatory approval process. Um, so the UK has a three step uh, generic design assessment process. Um, on Monday this week, it was announced that uh, Rolls-Royce SMR have successfully completed step one of the regulatory process, which is wonderful news. It was completed as we expected on time after 12 months, and we have immediately been given permission to move into step two. So we have now commenced step two of the generic design assessment process. So step two will be a thorough detailed review by the independent regulator of the full design and the full safety case for the overall power station. And much detail of that review process will be made public. Mm -hmm. So we have a new website that's been launched for the GDA um, and the first set of details and reports have already been uploaded to that website. And over the next 80, 12 to 18 months, um, I think officially the step two will be 16 months. There will be um, more and more information and documents uh, published on that website that will be available to any member of the public to look at um, and uh, and give us feedback and comment on, which is part of the standard process in the UK. Um, so as that process develops, our design will continue developing and we expect to exit step two um, around mid year to autumn next year um, in 2024. And that will give us permission from the regulator, provided that we move forward appropriately uh, and meet all the conditions. Um, then we will be given permission to immediately begin manufacture of long lead items. Um, so we are uh, moving forward rapidly in terms of the overall design of the process. Um, but the design is progressing as expected to be able to meet a, uh, uh, a proposed delivery date for um, first plant in operation in the early 2030s.